Welcome back. When Dan Price, the CEO of Gravity Payments, announced that the minimum salary for his employees would be set at $70,000 and he took a big pay cut himself, he, he received a lot of praise for addressing the issue of low wages and income inequality. He also, though, received some criticism from some of his own employees who thought it wasn't fair to give raises to workers who didn't necessarily earn it. Also, some said he was using his company to make a political statement. So we wanted to know how it has all worked out so far. Joining me is Dan Price, CEO of Gravity Payments. Thank you for being here, Dan. Thanks for having me, Poppy. I want to play what you told my colleague, Carol Costello, just a few months ago when you announced this. Let's roll it. You know, I was getting pretty emotional, to be honest, as I got there, and I, I, I lost it a little bit. Um, and so I was watching other people and I think they were trying to figure out, like, is this a joke? Is this real? And some of them were like, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing thing ever. And there was just this long silence that lasted what felt like an eternity. And then everyone erupted and started screaming. I mean, people were really thrilled and really excited. But the road from there to now has, has been tough. How has it gone? Well, I want to address the notion of whether or not the team really deserved it. Uh, my team at Gravity Payments, which works so hard, they've actually saved hundreds of millions of dollars for independent businesses. And that's our mission, to help independent businesses succeed and to give them better options on their credit card processing. So I think they deserved it, but I also think that you have to look at the human impact. And I think you mm -hmm. have to look at, is it worth it to make a short-term sacrifice to create a long-term gain? And I'm being criticized a lot for the short-term sacrifice that I'm making. People are, you know, in some cases, poking fun at me or, or saying, like, look at this guy, he's, he's going to fail or he's failing. But actually, I think we can actually take pride in that sacrifice. And while, you know, the obstacles in front of us have gotten bigger, our resolve hasn't changed. We're more determined than ever to make this work. So here's why I mention that, right? Because there was this long, fascinating New York Times piece on you about a week ago. Um, and, and it included two of your most valued employees quitting, yep. right? And one of them told the New York Times, quote, now the people who were just clocking in and uh, in and out were making the same as me. It, it shackles high performers to less motivated team members. What do you make of that? Well... I think it's a valid opinion and you know both of these team members are people that I, although they don't work at Gravity anymore they're still valued friends and counselors that I speak to and, and I, I value their opinion I value what they had to say. On the other hand for me it's, it's a non-negotiable if we're actually able to pay everybody enough that they can live a normal life within a mile or two of our office mm -hmm. then to me there's a moral imperative to, to create some standard, some floor, and we all agree that there should be some kind of floor, or most agree. It's just a debate about where that floor should be. So let me ask you this. When you look at the debate over income inequality in this country, many times you hear people refer to how many times more some chief executives in this country make than their average employee, right? 200 times, yeah. 300 times, yep. et cetera. Do you think that there should be a cap on how many times more a leader can make than their average employee? You know, I'm, you're not going to get a lot of opinions on me on macroeconomic theory just because I'm not qualified to give op opinions on those things. But what I saw was inequality was a huge issue in my small micro community at Gravity Payments. And when I talked to my friends who are really smart at economics, it didn't matter if somebody was libertarian, Republican, Democrat, or socialist, everybody agreed that income inequality was growing and that that was not good for the country. On the other hand, I can kind of control my little micro group. And so for me to be able to do something to address the issue, even if it was bold, uh, it was something that I felt like was the right thing to do, and I actually am really happy about the decision that I made in spite of the challenge I faced. Let me ask you this. Could a publicly traded behemoth of a company do what you did and set a minimum salary at, say, $70,000 like you did? Absolutely they could. And not only could they, I think we'll see that many will. Um, I got an email uh, exchange with uh, Sheryl Sandberg. She's the chief mm. operating officer of Facebook. And they set a minimum salary that's different than what uh, the jurisdictions that they operate in would set. And it wasn't as high as mine, but it was still a step in the right direction. And it proves it can happen. 
I think one of the questions that you can ask is, what can we as a company do? And Warren Buffett, one of the best investors of all time, he says, treat a business like a business. Don't treat it like a vehicle to speculate on what the value is going to be. And so if you can see in your business that you can have better long-term structural integrity by paying everybody that works there a, fa a fair wage, you might actually hurt the way Wall Street looks at you, but by having a better bin business, eventually Wall Street and their perceptions are going to catch up to the health of you and your company. Bottom line, Dan Price, would you do it again? I know it's been a bumpy road, but would you do it again? You know, the road's been bumpy, the challenges have been big, but our resolve and, and, and the team determination that we have is more than I could have ever imagined, and I'm thrilled that we're taking on this challenge. So nice to have you on, Dan. It's an important conversation to keep having. Thank you. Thanks, Poppy.